boom, you just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. All right, we got a giveaway for you today. You're going to love this one. Uh, if you win the contest, you get a free program. You get MAPS Aesthetic access for free. It's a great workout program. It's built some pretty amazing bodies. Here's how you can win access to MAPS Aesthetic for free. In the first 24 hours we drop this episode, leave a comment below this video. Make it a good one. If we pick your comment, you're the winner. Congratulations. You get access to a program that's going to make you look hot, sexy, muscular, and lean. All of those things. Isn't that cool? By the way, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications so that you know when we drop these episodes because oftentimes if you can comment in the first 24 hours, you have a chance to win other awesome stuff. Um, one more thing before we start the podcast, we do have two programs and a workout pro uh, program bundle, 50% uh, off sale. Okay, so the first program is MAPS Hit. The second program on sale is MAPS Split. And the bundle that's on sale is the Bikini Bundle. You can find all of those at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just make sure to use the code Spring Break. All right, enjoy the podcast. Hey, I got something for you guys, dude. What so you got? yesterday this dropped. So hopefully, hopefully I'm like the first to bring this up. But I died laughing. Katrina actually shared it with me. Uh, there's a a luxury uh, auto shop guy. Okay, he owns this. Like they they work on Ferraris and Lambos oh, okay. and stuff like that, yeah. right? And it's it's going viral right now, and it's all it was all over the news yesterday last night. He uh, paid the his he fired an employee and he paid their final check. In pennies. Oh, and I he, think I might have seen this. And he, he in oil, right? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> do you know why? No. Well, he must have really pissed him off. So, yeah, he totally. The guy's an asshole too, by the way. It's it's unfortunate because uh, you guys know I've pulled I've pulled a similar move you off. You did this when your car got towed. Is it, yeah, 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 similar. It was, yard, it was quarters right? yeah. though, first of all. So it was nowhere near. So that's like you're talking about like a like almost a thousand pounds of fucking pennies. <laughs> like it's it was and now legally wow. it's legal tender. So you, you have you, to accept it. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. What, what are you going to do? There's nothing illegal he did. And then in addition to that, what Justin said is there's like this oil on him. So it's like kind of grimy and shit. You know, you know what? And I didn't know this, but you know why that's like just fucking hilarious? Why? Because you can't take it to the bank until you clean all that shit off. No. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a thousand wow. pounds of pennies <laughs> and he has to clean them all. Yeah. Wow, are they just gonna? I mean, at that point, you just go, "Well, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this." Yeah, and no, they just throw it away. They just, they just put it in a. No, it's thousands of dollars. Thousands, I mean, thousands of dollars. Oh, I thought it was like a couple hundred bucks. No, it's a, it's like a couple thousand dollars. It was their final check. Wow. And he put it, and he, I think he dropped it off in their driveway with a little note, <laughs> and it, and that was covered in oil. And he had to get a wheel, he got a wheelbarrow, and filled the entire thing up, right? And it's just sitting in their in their garage, and that they were talking to him, right? They interviewed him, and it said that they uh, they can't take it to the bank until they clean all the oil. Uh, off. Well, don't you have to clean them and then also roll them, roll them, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Into into those things, yeah. So I mean, how long would that it would take him? Like a, forever, like a month. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. a long so time. The ultimate fu. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now what sucks was like I was so excited to to read. The, I read the article, then I watched the video on the news and everything like that. And I was like, I was totally pro this asshole move because I'm like, you know what? Probably some fucking dumbass kid <laughs> deserved it, right? Mm -hmm. But the guy's kind of a douchebag. Like he's they they interviewed like five like former employees. They're like yeah, he's a dick. Yeah, <laughs> wow. like he yeah he's done some like really. Now you paid your bill because mm. they towed your car a bunch of times and they were assholes and you paid them in quarters. I've been in quarters and did, and they had to accept it, right? Yeah, they had to accept it. They had to accept how many? It, <laughs> how it many? was a lot. It was and I broke it up right, so I didn't give it to them in the roll. So I got it from the bank. So it was all about. Uh, it, which, you actually went out of your way to do all that. Oh, absolutely. Well, because I, they had ruined my day at that point. If those that haven't been listening to the podcast <laughs> so for a long time so. don't remember the story, <laughs> yeah. but I used to, I lived in a, in a uh, an apartment complex or a condo, right? This is where my my first condo was out. Um, and it, it, this there's a hustle here. If you guys don't know about this, like a lot of these like. Uh, gated communities, they work deals out with these tow truck drivers. Oh yeah, it's always the same company. In fact, yeah. there's always a phone number on the side. Yes, yes, yeah, and they and it's it's a backdoor deal. It's like so the first the the complex. So the complex I live in, I own the place and pay my fucking HOAs that were ridiculous and everything. I'm only allowed one car outside of my garage that I have. I get a parking pass for. Well, for someone who has three cars or more, you're pretty much screwed. Or if you have a roommate, which I also had. So I had a roommate, plus I had multiple cars. So we couldn't even park in our own gated community. We have to park outside of that. So they have a deal at midnight. 
you know, tow truck comes in, he has the gate code, puts the gate code mm-hmm. in, cruises the parking lot. Makes some money. Yeah, swoops it yeah, up. swoops up a bunch of these. So they used to do this to me. And I had the attitude of like, you know, and if I had a girlfriend over or what someone spend the night or what like that, I'd be like, God, what am I going to do? And if, I, by the way, at this time in my life, I'm living on East Side San Jose, which those that don't know, it's like, that's yeah. the ghetto side. And in the gated community, I felt safe, but out right outside of that, like your shit's getting jacked. Yeah, cars yeah. get broken into <laughs> yeah. all yeah. Get me on blocks. So the way I looked at it was like, I'll just roll the dice, you know, with, you know, possibly getting towed or trying to play this, you know, hide and go seek. It's a high bill, dude. It's like 300, 400. Oh, yeah. So I, it was just, it was normal. I, every month, sometimes multiple times a month I was paying for for tow fees and it was just like I chalked it up to the game like whatever you know what I'm saying I'm not going to risk parking it out there like I just kept doing it. It was I. I didn't want to park outside the complex. I'd rather the tow truck knew your address. Oh, they 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 knew who <laughs> the people at the tow place knew me because I'd show up and oh you know and and he, honestly it was like. I almost just laughed it off. You got me again. You know, it was like kind of that attitude. Like, I know I'm not supposed to be parking in there. They know, they've got me a bunch of times. Every time you come, you have to bring your ID, your registration, your license, all that stuff. And they 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 had to fill out in this book and they they have they stamp. It's like I had you could go back and you could see me every time, every car I've had and which one's been towed every time. And this one time, I'm late for work too, but already, right? So I'm already running behind and I get there. And I didn't have, for some reason, I didn't have my registration. I think I was driving a Toyota at that time and I didn't have the registration on me yet. I was literally towed just last week. Like my, I was like, I made like you walk in. They're like, Adam. Yeah. And then they're like, oh no, well you, you need your registration or we can't give you your car. And I'm just like, come on. I was just here last week. Flip the fucking book back. You could see my registration right there. It's a week ago. You know, you just towed me. Oh no. And this, the lady who like oh, older lady, just being a bitch to me, total bitch to me. And I'm like, are you serious? You're really going to make me go all the way back home just to get my registration? So I, and my, so I had to get a ride, get it, go back. And at that point, I was so pissed. I was like, that's it. I'm going to go to the bank and pay these motherfuckers in quarters. So <laughs> I got all the quarters, which, it, you know, I mean, it was like a plastic bag about that big. Broke them all up and <laughs> sat them on the counter. Here's your money. Yeah, yeah. Walked yeah. next door to, to McDonald's and got myself a coffee and sat there. because I had to, she had to count. Yeah, every- yeah, because they, they wouldn't let me go until they counted it. So that was so I was kind of somewhat shooting myself in the foot, right? right. I mean, if I would have done that in pennies, they would have made me sit there and count out That's every- commitment, dude. You were committed to getting them back. Yeah, I was so- I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm so mad about this. What My day's shot. I'm yeah, already yeah. late. I'm calling in. I'm not going to work today. Let's make everybody miserable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. like- I'm, <laughs> And I'm over there pretending like I'm not bothered anymore drinking my cup of coffee, but I'm here it's fuming inside. So, but yeah, this guy does this. I think it's absolutely hilarious. Unfortunately, this guy's an asshole though. Right. So, as you, I mean, but I thought that was what fucking, are the odds? Yeah, what a great, what a great move. Me and my buddy did that, but not because for any other reason than we just thought it was funny. So we were the assholes. We paid for a pizza like that with a bunch of coins. Why would you do that to a pizza guy? Because we were high school. Now that's a asses. dick move. Yeah. Totally, that's a dick move. You right know, there. come on, okay, poor dude. pizza guy. He's like probably yeah. some teenage kid getting by. And it stuff was, like that. dude, living like, off what? of like two dollar tips for it, pizza. It was, dude. Oh, it, it did was, you do it without even tipping him too? No, we we tipped him, but it was all like pennies, dimes, and nickels. And, oh, that's bad. But you dude. know what? We okay, come on. Like you guys were never dickheads in high school. Of Let's, course, yeah, dude. So just because you know you're with your buddy, yeah. we cut school. So we're at his house and we're watching a Godfather marathon while we're supposed to be at school and we're hanging out and we're like, hey, let's get a pizza. And we're like, dude, you know it would be hilarious? So fucking guy shows up and, you know, I'm in the back. <laughs> you know, like a dumb animal. <laughs> you know, you're watching your friend because I'm I don't have the guts to give him the coins, you know? Uh, I'm like, I don't want to do it. I'll do it. Just like, yeah. And that's exactly what he did. He yeah. took it, he's like, he goes, oh. It's like you fucking kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's like, ugh. Yeah. And then he leaves and we're like, <laughs> teenagers. <laughs> we're fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's hell. That's messed up. That's, me- that's messed up. Couple sure. of assholes. For sure. Yeah. Hey, you know, the opposite of assholes, super nice. Uh you know, Check this out. So you guys, obviously, I just moved recently, um, and I had, and this is a different. This just shows you. I love good companies like this. So uh, I have like my dog food on delivery. I've got Butcher Box being delivered to me. Uh, what other companies that we have on, like on auto ship right mm-hmm. every single month? Mm-hmm. And I it was a headache because the time that we were transferring to the new address, it was, some of the stuff was already in transit. Oh. 
And you know, I I ate it. I lost like my stuff. I lost some of that. The only company that was rock solid was Butcher Box. Butcher Box does that. Yeah. They not only they did they their their customer they service ate is it. They ate. Yes. They ate it, and they shipped me a whole new box out to the new place. They did the same thing uh -huh. to me because my where I live. If you type in my address, it'll take you to the back where the garage is because the garage is separate from from the the place I live in. So you could either deliver things in the front door or. The, the the GPS or whatever will take you to the garage. Right. Well, we don't see stuff that's delivered by the garage unless I'm leaving or coming home. And so that happened to us. And, yeah. you know, it's it's packed in the, the freezer thing or whatever. Yeah. It was over a weekend. We were in in the house all day long. None of us ever left the garage. So I, I'm like, I see, I go on my email. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. I go out there. I had been sitting out there. It was in the summer. So it was fucked because it melted yeah. and got hot or whatever. And they fuck their customer services. Incredible. They're so good. They yeah. like they forgot like bacon. They had some deal with bacon, and we you know opted in, wanted to you know have that in the order, and it didn't show up. And so we all we did was just contact them, and then they gave us like a whole another order of like five or six like things of bacon. Wow. I was like, yeah. Have you guys? Okay, d please tell me you tried their pork chop. I know I bring this up all the time. I still haven't. Oh come on, dude. Yeah, I know, I know. It's I am not a fan of pork. I'm not a big. pork I haven't dude. done that one yet. It's. They're they're the, they're like this big, right? They're like this like circle or whatever, and uh, you know we do the iron skillet, mm -hmm. and then Jessica makes this like butter garlic. I don't know what the hell it is, sauce or whatever yeah. you call it, and pour it over. It's incredible, and I don't like pork, but yeah. this is it's so tender and sweet and delicious. I've had pork with some like apple maple glaze thing on it. It was delicious. Mm. Yeah, but of course that's really sweet. Yeah, I'm a big I'm a yeah. big fan. All right, I've been saying I'm gonna do it for. All right, I got some. Uh, Controversy for us today. Yes, yeah, oh, that's my favorite oh, thing. So, my Doug, did you got that? You got that picture for me. <laughs> so, if you could pull that picture up, I'm going to tell these guys the background. Okay, so today is uh, NCAA tournament, right? March Madness is officially uh, starting. I think today mm. uh, is that wreckable? Huh? Wreckable? Yeah, yeah, yeah wreckable. Okay. <laughs> so I got tagged. I got tagged on this this picture, and I actually just went. I actually just went back and so I got tagged early on it. Right on this. Uh, some girl posted this. I don't know who she is. Uh, small following. I think oh, had, you sent this to us. Yeah, she was like, I, I think she's some coach or something. I don't know. I don't know who she is, but she's small following and le like less than less than I think five six thousand followers. But this post has gone viral since this morning, since last night. Mm. So I saw it. I didn't comment. I just looked at it and I was like, you know, I thought it was interesting. And so I I screenshot it. I sent it over to you guys. So this is mm. so right now you've got the big tournaments going on. So this is uh, the men's and women's basketball tournaments, yeah. and they're doing very similar to what the NBA did. They have like this bubble. Right, so they everybody oh, for COVID or whatever. Yeah, for COVID, they stay there for the entire the entire month or whatever Got it. with the, the duration of the the tournament, and they and they have and they set up these facilities. So the picture on the top is the men's facility to work out, and the picture on the bottom is what the women got. Mm. Okay, so the top is uh, yeah for like the full on gym. Right, you got you bumper barbells, plates, bumper plates, the whole deal. Yeah, I, I'm going to take it even further. So I'm going to for the audience so they so they can get an, an idea. I would I would estimate, okay, based off of what I can see from these photos, that the, the men's facility has probably got about a quarter million dollars worth of equipment. A it's, a, it's a gym. Yeah. It, it, oh, it's, it's a more, nice gym. It's more than I mean, I can see six or seven full squat racks yeah. and platforms. I mean, it's yeah. it's sick. Now it's the, a, it's, now a, the, it's a, basically like a CrossFit competition, like they're outfitting the entire place yes. for it. Right. Now, the women's facility has a dumbbell tree. Yeah, and, it. And, and a little table. Literally, and, it's like it's like some, what you, what you so, find at your aunt's house. And, yeah, and a yoga mat. And pro, so I would say probably is that the full picture though. I, okay, even if it's not, let's pretend yeah, it is for okay. the, for argument's sake right yeah. now. Okay, so now I, I if you guys see, look at it, it's already got ninety four thousand views. Yeah. I saw some of our peers that I know in the fitness space. This okay, so with this highlight, uh, yeah, there's some outrage. Oh, this, there, there's people flipping out right of now. Of course. Now look, this is, and I know what they're saying. Oh, it's uh, it's sexist. The men get all this amazing equipment. The women. Get this no equipment or whatever, and I get the the I get that sentiment. Um, but here's the, un, I mean, this is just the truth, whether it's fortunate or unfortunate. And I'll give you some examples of the reverse. Here's the truth: these are market driven industries. Mm. Men's college basketball draws a lot of money and viewers. Women's basketball does not. Well, let me give you some specifics to that because I I had to go look this up before I, before I even opened my mouth about it because I I right away thought the same same thing. So I was yeah. like, hmm. and I was like, I obviously I knew that men's basketball draws more, but how much more I wasn't sure. Is it like a crazy discrepancy? Is it right? It's massively. It's different. not even in the same universe. So okay. the NCAA men's basketball tournament okay draws over seven hundred million dollars a year. Okay. Okay. 
the women's loses money yeah. every single year. Yeah. And that's just for the tournament. The yeah. rest, the whole rest of the year. Did you guys know that over 99% of all the women's basketball college programs lose money yeah. every mm -hmm. year? I know. Mm -hmm. And you have colleges like Duke University, Tennessee. Tennessee, by the way, broke records a few years back where the, the, the girls' team had like the most unbelievable streak. I think UConn did the same thing too. All three of those schools... They, they, they spend over a million dollars, lose almost a million dollars a mm -hmm. year on the women's program. So then I see this, right? And it comes up and I see everybody outraged. That, People oh, say it's not fair, but that's just, that's the way. Look, I'll tell you what, there are markets where the reverse is true. If you look at, for example, uh, fashion models, um, women out earn men tremendously. Is that true? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Top fashion models. Women generally crush men. There's way more. Name five fashion models that are men. Name five that are women. Well, I don't know either one of those. So, well, you would know. I bet you can name three at least that are women. Maybe no. from our era. Hmm. Um, but that's just yeah, that's one right from our era. Yeah, I know. Cindy Crawford, <laughs> yeah. Kate Moss, you know, yeah, <laughs> Naomi yeah. Campbell, Claudia, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's just uh, you know, Tyra Banks. Yeah, and and that's just it's just markets. It's just look. It's the same reason why men pay more money for car insurance than women. Do you now, guys know that? It's because men get more tickets and more accidents. Yeah, it's more, all more of a risk. It's all market uh, driven, and so and and and, and again, it's okay. Uh, look at Hollywood actors, right? Male actors tend to out earn female actors. Well, the truth is, the male actors people pay to go watch them. And here's the here's another part of this uh, this kind of inconvenient truth, I guess, is that even women will spend more money watching men play basketball than watch women. Yeah. So it's just Well, of course that's well, true. Yeah. Or else it is an uncomfortable truth. Yeah. There's a the top fashion model. So you just, I don't see any guys, right? They're all No, no, it was 19 and they were all women. You're yeah, right. You're so right. it's just it's all market driven and here's the deal. And this is what I love about this. If you think this is unfair. So if you're the one that gets outraged by this and you mm -hmm. see this like that's not fair. Take a mirror and look at your own face. Do you watch uh, women's basketball? It's our, enough? it's us. We're the ones that drive it. Because yeah. if the consumers all of a sudden switch to watching all women's basketball, well, it would go in the other direction. I'd like to propose too. Like, so what are the? Because there are sports that get a lot more attention. Like, let's say, um, let's say tennis, for instance. Like, and women's tennis. I'm sure that, uh, in terms of like getting eyes and views, like they're probably making a substantial amount of more money than women's basketball. Yeah, they. I, I, I would, I would assume so. I would assume so. But generally speaking, uh, men's sports tend to do better yeah. in terms of earnings. I just, hate, I just, it's just interesting because it, it is. It do, you see a picture like that. I mean, you feel for you know these these women's teams. Like you know that's that's shitty. Like it sucks to kind of yeah. you know see discrepancies that are that vast, right? But again, it's an inconvenient. It's an inconvenient truth that you know. Like, what do you do with that? Because like, yes. if if we what what do we want to do? We want to just throw a lot more money in there to kind of like level the playing field. But now it's even more uh, in depth in, in terms of like like okay I, I just hate that everything goes straight to being sexist or racist yeah me. yeah like right away we just we right away it has to be sexist or racist right. instead of like looking a little bit deeper into this like is it is it really and your point is perfect Sal it's like if we all just start if we all said you know what men's basketball is kind of boring if everybody women's basketball it, is way more entertaining they would be the right. and we all started watching it 100%. totally and buying the jerseys and going to the games and buying all the popcorn while we're watching and spending all the money and it began it began to make that kind of now the argument on the other side is that they don't get the same exposure therefore that's the reason why they're not it's the exposure follows the the demand right. it's not controlled by someone at the top who's like ha, 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 we're going to make sure that nobody that's not true okay look at the UFC right Mm -hmm. UFC included women's fighting, and at one point, the top fighter in the UFC pay was Ronda Rousey. At one point, she was making more money yeah. than everybody else. By the way, she wasn't the best fighter. She just had the biggest draw. In fact, you talk to – I know a lot of fighters who, who fight professionally, and they'll tell you, and it's frustrating for them, that oftentimes – the best fighters are not the ones that are paid the most. Yeah. It's the guys and girls that have the biggest draw. Look at who's that YouTube guy that went and made a shit ton of money uh, fighting the the basketball player, uh, Jake Paul or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look at that. You know, here you are. You're a boxer and you've been training your entire life in golden gloves and getting your head bashed and you're fighting. And then you got some dude who's just a YouTube star 
made millions of dollars off one fight. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. But that's just the consumers are the ones that decide. So we're the ones that have to. It's if, tough. If, you got you to gotta turn it back on yourself and like your own habits and what you're into. And why are you into it? You got to like really assess that. Now, yes. where, where does where does Title IX stand in this? Like what exactly does that, what, is, what does that do in a situation like this? I know that I, I'm not super familiar, but I do believe. Can you pull that up, Doug? Can you do a quick little yeah. rundown on and give yeah. me, school me on Title IX? Yeah. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it basically uh, guarantees a certain amount of scholarship. So it's more scholarship driven. Yeah. yeah. Is it, it just that? I think there's more to that. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's some stipulations in terms of like how much money they allocate to towards the programs. I would think, you know, like I would, I would be interested to see what that looks yeah, like. Yeah, I, you know, and this is this is obviously going to piss a bunch of people off. But the irony, it, of this oh, here it is. It's a federal law that states no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, being excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. So if it gets any federal financial assistance- Which all they, these colleges do. Then they have to have men and women's. Essentially, is what well, saying. it's not. It's further than that. It's also the benefits. So then, right. you know, there's the argument right there. Is that okay? All these big schools, you know, the Dukes, the Harvards, the Stanfords, all these schools are getting government assistance, and so because they're getting government assistance, they should all the women should get equal benefits, right? Mm, uh, I don't know if that's if that if that if it, it means sure that. sounds like that to me. I think it means we're going to have a program. We're going to have mm -hmm. women's sports that are. So if we have a men's team, we have a, a women's team. Yeah, you know, if you read that again, it, it goes into the benefits of it. What does that say, Doug? Yeah, that's not it right there. Oh, that's different. Yeah, uh, that's different. Yeah, so no, I don't think it means that they get. I think the the in terms of money and all that stuff, I don't think it means that. I think it just means. That they have the they have the the sport that they have it available mm -hmm. and that they provide scholarship. Well, I mean, so it sounds like it's a gray area, right? I think you're I think you're right, and that's why legally the 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 school can get away with sticking the girls with the yoga mats and ten pounds. That's all they get, and mm -hmm. then the guys get quarter million dollars worth of equipment mm -hmm. because legally they're probably protected. But uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's a, it's interesting to me too because here's the truth, and again, this is probably going to upset people, but. Whatever, it's the truth. If there was a school, okay, let's let's take it out of Division One, and there's like a, a small school that's trying to get by, and they have a, a, a men's football team, okay, and it was losing money for th three years in a row. Yeah, your you, program's getting cut, gone. Yeah, yeah, d programs deleted, gone. Yeah, by the by, yeah, the, they actually have a law that protects them to always have a program. By the way, the reason why these private colleges spend so much money and energy on some of these sports. Is because that's what generates revenue for the colleges. It's what brought, it brings people in. Of course, they buy their merchandise. You got people paying, you know, trying to get into these schools. That's the only reason why they spend so much. Because if you go to some of these colleges, you just see how much money they spend. Go to their stadiums and their gyms, and their they spend tremendous amounts of money on their sports programs, and it'll oftentimes bend a lot of uh, rules in order to allow students to come in who are really good at certain sports. Mm -hmm. uh, why do they do that? It generates a lot of money. And again, we're the ones that control that. I learned this as a kid. I remember uh, as a young kid, I don't remember where we were going. We were driving somewhere, and um, I, I, I was just looking out the window, and I was paying attention to things, and I would see liquor stores, right? And I was old enough to understand that, you know, alcohol, cigarettes are not good for people. And I asked my mom in the front, my mom and dad, I said, Why, how come I see so many liquor stores as we're driving, but I don't see like as many grocery stores or, you know, churches or schools and stuff like that. And I said, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's terrible. They're trying to get people to drink a lot of alcohol. Just and, giving them you what you want. Yeah. You and my, and my mom and dad said, what do you think would happen if nobody went to the liquor store and bought alcohol and, and cigarettes? Mm -hmm. So they would disappear. So the reason why there's so many of them is because we people keep going to them and giving them their money. Yeah. So it's all market driven. So it all, it's all reflected on us. And so this is just, it's just the way it is. It's just, right. it's, there's, there's yeah. the, the men's sports generate a lot of money and, and that's just the bottom line. But sometimes again, I use the UFC as an example, because for a second there, Ronda Rousey was the top paid athlete in the UFC mm -hmm. had nothing to do with the fact, you know, it was because she drew so many people. Did she surpass watch. everybody at one point? At one point she was. Cause was, she was, she's in the same era as McGregor. I don't think she ever passed McGregor. I don't think McGregor, I think at one point she was the highest. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if McGregor was. <laughs> I mean, I definitely know that at one point. She was she, definitely one of the highest. She was the first, uh, first female to be the main event. I know that. Mm -hmm. I know that, but I don't know if she ever surpassed uh, what McGregor was making. She definitely was one of the top. I, I, if not the yeah, top, she was yeah. definitely 
in, you yeah. know, up there. Yeah, yeah. In terms of her draw. So. Yeah, I know she was high. I didn't. I didn't think that she ever was. I don't. I don't, I don't know if she was the top at the time or not. I don't yeah, think, maybe I don't Doug can find what her what her yeah. pay. Oh, maybe though. Maybe I'm. I mean, it's uh, there. You go. T, uh, Ronda Rousey talks being the UFC's highest paid fighter. Wow. So wow. she was at one point. And it, it, it just because people wanted to watch. Her it was fight. fascinating. Yeah. And again, she wasn't the best fighter. She yeah. wasn't. You know, she got her ass kicked by a couple people afterwards, but. She was entertaining to watch. She though. was yeah. very entertaining to watch. I mean, she yeah. went. She ended up in WWE because of it, uh, because she was so entertaining. Uh, what's his name? Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. You know, he jumps in the UFC, never fought in MMA, and they paid him a shit ton of money to fight. Uh, I forgot who it was that he fought. It was Frank uh, Mir. Frank Mir, who at that time was kind of like, yeah. you know, he'd already fought. Arm barred the shit out of him and like yeah. leg locked him or something. But it's just a draw, you yeah. know? So college sports are like that. And so it yeah, is what it's, it is. Yeah, it's like back to your Logan Paul thing. Like that's like nobody really, uh, well, obviously there's people that want to see it, but like people like me that are like into actual boxing or into actual like UFC fighting. Like it, it to me, I'm like, oh, I don't want to see that happen. But guess what? There's a lot of people that want to see that happen. And so they pay Pay for it to happen, and so that's just what you have Dude, to recognize. I just think it's so funny when people get outraged by this type of stuff and go right away to this. Like, I think they envision like there's these, you know, a group of ask them how ten, much money ten, they spend on watching ten this old sport. straight white males that are like trying to suppress all these women. They're like, hey, let's just fuck them and give them yoga mats and dumbbells, and then we're gonna hook the boys up with a cord. No, <laughs> like it's not like that. I yeah. guarantee there's a budget. Some conspiracy. You know what I'm saying? They're like, okay, this is all the money we have to spend. Where is some of the money gonna go? Where's yeah. some of it not gonna go? And they're there's, like, eh. let me tell you what. what 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 runs these people at the top more than anything? There's one color that that matters more than any yeah, other. That's right, green. It's green. Yes. And if they see green, it's not sexist. It's not biased. It's not racist. Yeah. All of a sudden, all of their you know their biases are gone. I don't give a shit. I yeah. can hate you all I want. You're making me money. Cool. Let's put you at the front. Yeah. And let's make a deal. You know, yeah, it's just kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know the way. Speaking it works. of crazy money and business, uh, did you guys ever? Did you guys watch? Anyone watch the blockbuster documentary yet? Block? Oh no! I it's didn't. on. It's no, trending on no, yeah. Netflix right now, and uh, I almost didn't watch it. Katrina wanted to watch it, and I was like, "Yeah, I kind of know this story already," but I'm glad I did because there was a lot of things I didn't know. Like for one, do you guys remember? Because it was in our lifetime, it was in the '80s, the evolution of uh, movie cassettes, movies at home. You know, it was not that long ago that you couldn't watch a movie that was just in the movie theater on a, mm -hmm. on a cassette tape on your TV at home. That was during our lifetime when that transition happened. Do you remember that transition? Oh, man. I just remember, I was really, we were young. I mean, yeah. I was, yeah, we were. I, was just, I remember the mom and pop video stores yes. was a thing for a while. Like, Blockbuster wasn't really the dominant force uh, at the time. It was like all these little mom and pop shops and you would go in and, you know, it was like you're borrowing it, but really they made money off of the late fees. Right? Yeah, I well, used to, We used to go to a place called uh, One Hour <laughs> photo drive up that was the name of the place uh, we yeah. went to get our so movies. there's a couple like really interesting uh things first of all that was actually a very short window it was early 80s when it when it hit and it was only for the very early 80s like 80 i think 84 by the 85. way you know what industry drove the creation of those vcrs and tapes more Porn. name yep pornography yeah. so this so Balls. that actually brings me to one of my so you guys and think about what a ballsy move it was for the first guy because there was a, a a blockbuster type of video store before blockbuster it was called i forget what the guy named it it was in uh texas uh, and that that was like what catapulted the first like blockbuster mm -hmm. kind of like idea. But how ballsy was it that he goes out and builds this superstore that was going to have, you know, 10, 15 of every single DVD. It's going to be massive and then not have an adult section. Mm. Think about the think of the cojones that it would take to do that, knowing what you just said. Yeah, because before that, that was it. I mean, anybody who rented movies early was because you. were And renting. that's why they had that shady back room. You got to think that that was where they were making most of their money. Was so on, he wanted to make it like family, right. very family. Um, yeah, and and go all big like that, but it paid off, right? I mean, he did really well, and I believe that first one got sold to somebody who later on turned it into a franchise, which is Blockbuster. Um, but where they really crushed was when they actually made a deal with movies. So when it originally came out, I did not know this. Do you know what the original video cassette, uh, if you were to buy like the, the you, know, hun you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or whatever the fuck was going on in the 80s, <laughs> uh, it, what that would cost on cassette when you first bought it? You no. know what? $99. And that was back then dollars? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, not even adjusted That's for like inflation? That's like 300-something dollars right yeah, now, right? And, and here's the thing. Soon it's going to be a million people, dollars. People thought, <laughs> it was a, people thought it was a good deal. Because the way they thought of it was, I could have 10 of my friends over, 
we um, we would spend that all collectively spend almost that much money going to the movie theater. So you and just charge your friends to come watch. I mean, movie? I imagine that's what they did, or they all went. Yeah, together. Plus, it was a new technology. I mean, you got to think of that. I remember my, my dad's first so video it's like cause, a status dude, thing. My yeah. dad's first recorder to, to record fa- home movies was like three hundred something dollars back then. I would never spend that much money on a tech, you know, on, on something to record people nowadays. Yeah. But it was just new. Yeah. So, and so, okay. So obviously someone gets smart and goes, oh my God, I can buy all these things and then I'll rent them to people for a couple dollars. Yeah. So that model comes out, explodes an entire industry. So now all the mom and pa's pop up. Now what puts them completely out of business is Blockbuster goes and makes a deal with the movie. So, so they get it first? Mm. Not only they get it first, they get 100 copies per store yeah. and they get it for $5 a movie instead of $99 oh, a movie. Wow, that's smart. And they give them a rev share. So they offer the they they offer all the the, the they mov, offer the movie industry all the big uh, production companies a kickback on the uh, uh, on all of the rentals and so in order so they make this deal oh okay well then we're going to give you all these copies for a super low price mm. so they can fill all their stores and it just completely oh yeah I remember it. I remember those mom and pops you get like one or two yeah. copies and like if you weren't there right away like it was gone I like, is there anything more disappointing than going to the the video store. You see the box. This is how they used to display them. They would have like boxes of the movies, and you're like, "Oh shit, Terminator 2. Yeah. You'd grab the box, and behind it would be no video. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. I'm how many times did you see Critter before you actually finally rented it? Yeah. Well, I I remember uh, Critter. Critter. <laughs> what a I, re- I, re- I remember Gremlins. going up to the guy at the counter. This is before Blockbuster days, right? And being like, hey, "When's it due back? Yeah. You know, yeah. and asking him like, "Well, it's supposed yeah. to be due on Tuesday yeah. at four. Just o'clock. remember, be kind, rewind. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> You guys remember that? <laughs> yes, I remember that. I remember watching videos with my parents, and like a you know a dirty scene would come up, like boobs or whatever. And you know it's 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 VCR, so you you can either stop it and fast forward it and predict when the scene is over. Which sometimes you'd be mid naked, so we'd like stop rewind, you know, fast forward, hit play. Oh shit, stop! And so then what he would do is he would just fast forward it while it was playing, so you could kind of see what's going on. Yeah. And yeah. I'd be sitting there like, yeah. Do you yeah. know that was one of the, the dumbest <laughs> moves that Blockbuster ever did to try and compete with Netflix when Netflix started to come out? of nowhere, they decided to waive all late fees to try and rival because that was Netflix big. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah, that Netflix was, used to mail you DVDs. N- yeah. Oh, yeah, and there was no late no fees. No late fees. Yeah. No late fees. You just when you got when you mailed them back, you got your next yeah. set, and that was like the way they their model. Blockbuster, brilliant at, at first, dumb at the end. Yeah. Didn't wasn't didn't Netflix try to approach them to work yeah. with them? Fifty million. They offered. They got laughed out of the office, dude. Fifty million dollars is what they could have bought Netflix for. What is it? What is Netflix valued at right now? Billions, right? Yeah, they in the billions. billions, at least a few Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, at least a few. Yeah, no, they're in the billions, right? So if they could have it for fifty, let's million, find out. Let's find what out. did that cut? So they cut out the late fees. Like, what did that hurt them financially? Two hundred and fifty million dollars a year annually, Woo! right? Right away, Insta- just like that, instantly, just lost it. Well, yeah. they were dead. Yeah, that See, was like it, the majority. They of the weren't revenue. dead. They weren't dead yet. No, I'm saying they probably were desperate. They're like, "What do we do?" Oh, yeah. maybe thinking they could put Netflix out of business. Yeah, yeah. By doing something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know if they thought they could put Netflix out of business, but I thought they, I think they thought they could keep, you know, keep trucking along. They didn't. But. Net worth 2020. What does it say there, Doug? 125 billion. Wow. Wow. Ooh. So they could have bought it for 50 billion, 50 million. Uh. And they, they'd be, you know, for a long time, wow. Netflix didn't make any money. Do you guys know that? Most of these companies yeah, for a long time it made, it made no yeah it made no money and then yeah. eventually they started you know making and money. there was a time when Blockbuster they had the power even when Netflix was on the rise and becoming very popular they still had the capital yeah. they because they, Netflix was like you said losing and they're just building mm-hmm. their network they could have squashed them well, and they didn't did they get into Redbox at all because I remember they, they, at the they, same time yeah, like they, they kind of emerged they reference uh, Netflix and Redbox as the the two like major competitors that shifted the market in that direction talk about yeah. a short window of success right red box like they're for a second they were doing great the vending machine of movies yeah and then done then yeah. that was it they're did over. it die completely because you still see those and uh, do they, you yeah oh yeah you there was one stores. over there yeah there was one yeah, exactly they were in grocery stores who the hell's going to a red box right now <sighs> they're like bro, bro there's still people. a blockbuster there's still one. There's one. Yeah, there's still one. Where is it? Like Alaska? No, or something? Bend, Oregon. That's right. There were ones before that were Alaska. It's probably like more like a tourist attraction. It is now. Yeah. That's exactly what it's yeah. turned into. It's turned it's into a hipster like, mecca. Yeah. yeah. A blockbuster made a lot of money off of, I'm sure, candy and popcorn and shit like that. Nobody ever rented a movie and didn't buy candy. Yeah, you know, what? And they popcorn. actually didn't talk a lot about the, how much revenue that generated. I was all about the red vines and popcorn. That was the thing. That was the mm. combination. Red <laughs> vines, popcorn. Is Redbox still alive, Doug? Yeah, it is. 
It alive is and well. Yeah. Alive and well, even. I, I don't know how well, but yeah. it's still I mean, you got to think there's there's these rural towns where that don't have access to a lot of stuff. Probably don't even have... There's a lot of places... Okay, so my... Where I grew up uh, near... People who want to be off the grid. No, I ain't going to sign up for some yeah. shit. They well, know no, it's not, it's, not even, it's not even that. So I was... Uh, like I lived towns. up in Don Pedro, right? Where Don Pedro Lake is, which is kind of... This is about two, three hours from here. About three hours from here. And it's up in nowhere small ass population town their their internet yeah. service is terrible yeah so you're not streaming anything it's still today wow yeah a lot of the, like my best friend's parents I know house, a lot of towns like that and like all they have in town is like uh mountain mike's pizza yeah yeah <laughs> and that's it <laughs> always yeah. yeah yeah always a mountain mike's pizza so and places, then, places yeah, like Walmart that are still rocking dvds uh, you know they're still I guess you're right yeah there's so there's still until they get the uh the internet blimps that what's his name said he was gonna build yeah what's it what did he say was it is it elon or facebook so i thought facebook flight. was doing that yeah the, the free the free blimps that are gonna go over yeah. and give everybody yeah, internet that's facebook because elon's the satellites right? satellite did you internet. see the news on facebook they're they're dropping their glasses soon they're, they're I, I i didn't read the article so they're so what is it? Are is they it like augmented reality? Yeah. So okay, here's they're being all coy about it. Maybe Doug can pull an article up and we can we can dive into it a little bit. But they you can like people and, and dislike them in real life. They're like, oh that motherfucker. They're trying to downplay it a little <laughs> bit because originally I think back in 2017 they said like this you know these these VR AR glasses are coming out, mm -hmm. but they're it's not going to be completely augmented reality yet. And so they're just talking about how you got these new glasses. I don't know. It smells very Google glasses to me yeah, again. Yeah, it's probably like notification. Uh, you know, like a visual icon or something in the corner. I would guess. I'm, I'm like, they're probably just trying to flirt with it so you get used to the idea of having something like flashing in front he, of you. Here's what I think would be cool. If you got these glasses, not that I would use them because I think it's getting crazy, but let's say you have these glasses on and then you walk up to a restaurant and it immediately shows you all the friends that you know that like and reviewed that restaurant right. on your glasses. Yeah. I wonder if this is good. You look at it and it's like, you know, your friend John said this restaurant Dude, sucks. it's minority oh. report. I'm telling you guys, that was like the most accurate depiction mm. of like what, uh, you know, the future could look like because you're walking down the street, you're getting advertised to just by looking at certain stores, like, you know, certain uh, things are popping out in front of you. Like, you liked this. Why don't you come back in? Wow. Yeah. Man, it's going to record everything Guaranteed. in front of That's you. That's the article I was reading right there, Doug. That's yeah. the exact one. Smart glasses. Yeah. Speaking of glasses, Justin. Yeah. Damn, those look good on you. Ooh. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm trying to wear them more often. My eyes have been getting strained. I noticed like headaches. Like I thought it was like I was dehydrated or whatever, but like I've been on my phone and, and computer like a lot more frequently lately mm. and I'm getting headaches. What frames are those? So these are the Jamesons uh, from Felix Gray. Mm. Okay, so, they yeah. look really, really good. I wear yeah. the I wear the Nash. Do you know what? Yeah, which the Nash one? are the smaller ones? Yeah, I, I have those too. I do the Nash. You have Nash. Yeah, I don't have like I don't. No, have, you have a narrow face like me. Yeah, I don't have the, the block. No, you gotta get yeah. big. <laughs> you gotta go big, dude. Like I almost need those grandma uh, frames. You now, know what I mean? Like, the big now old. you wear prescription glasses too, right? Yeah. So did you get your prescription into the, your Felix Grays? I did not. These these ones are are just the blue blocking ones, but I have that pair. Like I have like three pairs dude like, well you know, i'm probably gonna start too. wearing them in here too because uh i mean if you can't see this whole thing we're literally inside a box that's for production and there's zero natural light that's coming here. <laughs> there's not a window it's in it room. no it is it, yeah. i feel like we're in a bomb shelter it's 100 percent super bright you get a feeling oh. after you leave too right oh. and i've noticed like wearing these like i don't i don't get quite as like i feel like fatigued almost yeah. when leaving this place hey did you guys get to see the article on reproduction and penis sizes shrinking and all that stuff. Oh, I heard you mention this. <laughs> oh, Our dicks gross. are shrinking. Yeah, hey. not ours. We're we're already set. Oh, we're okay. Yeah, we're good because uh, we you know we that's not what the article. Like, it's no. the next generation. So it's kind of good news for us. Like, how right? do we counter this? Because <laughs> yes. you know by by comparison, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, we're going to be huge. Yeah, soon. you're now you're now larger than average because of, <laughs> yeah. No, so this is crazy. This is kind of crazy. So there's a book that came out um, that talks about uh, Shauna. So the, the author Shauna Swan. She's an environmental and reproductive uh, epidemiologist. So she's obviously a scientist. And she's studying what's happening right now with our reproductive health, testosterone levels, like all the stuff. And now we've known for decades men's testosterone levels have been dropping. And our ability to reproduce has been dropping for a while. Sperm counts have been going down. Women's ability to reproduce. So she did this book where she actually goes and studies everything and highlights everything. Bro, this is crazy. You ready for this? This is scary stuff now. This is actually quite terrifying. So sperm counts, okay, in men since 1973 have dropped almost 60 percent. Wow! So since 1973, which is not that long before we were born, right? Sperm counts are down 60 percent, 
if we can did continue on this trajectory, so it's there's a there's a graph from when we started measuring this to now, and you can see the trajectory. It doesn't seem to be slowing down. If we continue at the same speed, sperm counts will be zero by 2045. Oh, wow. That's alarming. 2045, if we stay on this pace, no one's making sperm anymore. What? Which is crazy. Um, women, ready for this? The average 20-something woman today, so a woman in her early 20s today, is less fertile than her grandmother was when she was 35. Now, there's a big difference in fertility from women when they're 20 to 35. So that's a big gap there. But women today in their 20s are like women were, you know, a couple generations ago in the mid 30s. Now, what do they attribute this to? Is chemicals. It, oh, chemicals is the biggest factor? Yes. And here's the problem with some of these chemicals they call them forever chemicals because they don't go away mm. and they just accumulate. So the more of these chemicals we put you on it, piss it out, it, you know, it goes in the water, the water, you can't filter all of it they, out. They, okay. So according to this book, they do studies on infants and they find infants are just, just full of a lot of these chemicals that affect our. Uh, you know, our, our hormone systems, hmm. our reproductive systems. They're finding that uh, with rat studies, and there even are some human studies that suggest that that uh, penis sizes are shrinking because of the this exposure to these these chemicals. Now, that's what you said originally. That would be so hard to measure that. Um, well, especially with how much there's, we are. You know, all I got to do is go on Instagram, get all the dick pics together. You know, <laughs> Catalog it. Yeah, that's a, that's a buy. There's a little bit of a self selection. <laughs> Nobody with a small dick. That's is sending, true. You're not you're not showing it. Up. <laughs> They're not I sending mean, DMs. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, anyways, yeah. <laughs> if you are, you're some some brave. If you're courageous. <laughs> actually, that might that might work. You might actually get some attention. Yeah. Hey, it's small. I'm gonna show hey, you now. Yeah, but I'm yeah. confident. I'll be I'll be big later when everybody is uh, small. So <laughs> don't trip. This will be big in ten years. Trust <laughs> yeah, me. No, I no. just with because I mean, there's also like uh, average penis size by your nationality too, right? Uh, um, yeah, there's some stuff that suggests that, but it's oh really? Is yeah, it, is it pretty? Is it pretty even? I don't I, think it's even. I don't know. I haven't. I'm gonna, I haven't dived into that research, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> don't lie. Don't lie. I, I haven't dived. Come on, dude. I mean, the last one I saw said Sicilians had the big. I mean, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I believe it. That's not true. No, I don't know about. I don't know about that, but because uh, that's I, I would figure. I would. But they're, 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 they do studies on on animals, and they expose them to the same these chemicals that we're exposed to, and they find there's a dose dependent relationship. So the higher the dose. The more you see like this homogenization of the two sexes, it makes me feel like in the future we're going to look like mannequins. You ever seen a mannequin naked? Oh yeah, it's, it's just nothing. It's like a Ken doll with yeah. just taint. Yeah, just like one has bumps for boobs, but there's yeah. nothing there, yeah. and they but they're they both look. They're just it's just it, going to be nubs. It's just pure bunch yeah. all the way up yeah. and down. Oh yeah, isn't this kind of crazy though? This what's is a crazy bit scary. Is, what's crazy is that the the rate it's going, and when you said that it should go to zero, I mean. You gotta hope that we see something disrupt that in the next five Bro, years. Bro, what right? are we gonna do? Look at this. Here's so here's and at what point at what point does it become so alarming that it's like mainstream news? Like you I know you're reading like one of your nerdy articles. No, this reading. is making mainstream news. Oh, it is. Yeah. So so they're saying so uh, uh phthalate exposure is widespread in infants and that the chemicals were found in the urine of babies who came in contact with baby shampoos, lotions, and and powders, mm. so so they're in, uh, right away as babies. That women in their breast milk, they're finding it. It's really crazy. Look at this. Here's here's this is this is true from the same from the book. In the United States today, for example, you can't eat the deer meat caught in uh, Oscoda, Michigan. Okay, so deer, you hunt deer there. They won't let you eat the meat because the health uh, the health department there issued a do not eat advisory for deer caught near the former air base because of the staggeringly high PFOS levels in the muscles. Of deer there, so mm. the deer there because they're near the air base, the air force base or whatever. They're so high in chemicals. You hunt them, they say don't eat them. They're too high in these particular chemicals. What? Mm. Yeah, dude, this is this is getting crazy. Now this ties into some of the the you know the the uh, here's some stoner theories here. Ready, ready, Justin? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that say that aliens that visit us. <laughs> yeah, I know. They, like the, like this is the future us. Future us trying to figure <laughs> right. out the 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 that problem. Well, because, because it problem. looks like they don't wait, have wait, any wait. sex organs. Wait, 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 wait. Back yeah. that up again. You say what again? You think that what's so the, okay? So what's the what's the alien theory? So here? if you read the, if you read the accounts of people who've been abducted by aliens. Okay. Yeah. How they describe these gray aliens? Yes, these. First of all, the gray aliens have no genitalia. They yeah. seem to be very homogenous. You can't really tell if they're male or female. But a lot of the experiments that these people report 
revolve around doing something with the reproductive organs, taking sperm, taking eggs, creating hybrid alien humans. Like this is widespread stories from people who are abducted. So the theory is that aliens are future humans who've come back in time trying to figure out how to fix the reproductive problem because we're- I love this theory. At a point where we can't reproduce because we've- We've we've killed our our sperm and our eggs. What I know, dude. I like that one. Yeah, I Wait. like that one. That one seems realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's like, I now believe in aliens. <laughs> this makes a lot of sense now. Well, I mean, we've been drawing them the same for a really long yeah. time, and they do look like that. What? That they look like they don't have a sex. Yeah. No. Right. What they, if they did? What if, they, yeah. Yeah. they show up like when you have your bottle of Jergens, and they're like, "No, don't use the lotion. It yeah. has chemicals." Oh my gosh! I just thought <laughs> of that. Holy cow. And yeah. they have massive heads and brains, totally. right? Yeah. So that we, we get smarter and smarter, right? So I figure yeah. we figure out time travel by then. Well, and so in this article, they're talking about how, you know, it seems like kids are growing up and are less and less interested in sex mm. also as a result. Yeah, there's a lot of cultural factors to that too. Mm. But I mean, yeah, the, the chemical thing, if that's the biggest issue, well, you, you think about that with shampoos, lotions, with soap, with deodorant, with like all these things you're inundating your skin with constantly and just like, you know, uh, all these like xenoestrogens, I guess that all adds up, man. It does. That's why, you know, you want to use glass containers. How much it's, of this though is like a correlation thing with it's like, oh, the rise of xenoestrogens and then we also see this so we correlate no, it's, that. No, it's, it's the, caused. the evidence is, is becoming uh, pretty clear. Really? Yeah, the evidence. Wow. Is be- so here's the deal. It's not an evolutionary thing. There's no, okay, you're talking about four or five decades where we went from, you know, men averaging, you know, I don't know, eight or 900, you know, testosterone to five or 600 to sperm counts dropping 60% in a very short period of time. That's not how evolution works. It doesn't happen in two or three generations without serious pressures coming on uh, on the species. But, and so the, it's these chemicals and they test these chemicals on animals and they can reliably they can reliably uh, uh, change the sex of an animal or or fundamentally change it in in the womb by exposing them to chemicals so based to the o- same chemicals so based off the this alien theory because i like this theory yeah, this <laughs> yeah. that the there and the rate that we're going based off of what you said cuz it's 2000 and what you say 45 okay that's our lifetime Okay, we're gonna see that shit, right? Bro, we're gonna be around. That's what I'm saying. So, based off of that, that's we'll when be infertile. Then that's what they say, right? So, based off, they're saying if it goes on the same trajectory, yeah. there's right? no more sperms. So, it would make sense that these UFO sightings and everything is really going to escalate in the next ten years or so because they yes. they would I would imagine future us if we're aliens is going to come back to the the pivotal moment when it really when happened. shit went down. Yeah, so which would make this 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 the last 20 years to the next 20 years, right? Mm. Is the window. Wow. So we should so start now here's, to see that here's really what ramp I'm thinking. Up. Here's yeah. what I'm thinking. So 2045, uh how old are we going to be? We're going to be in our 60s, right? So we'll be in our 60s and sp- there's no more sperm, okay? Let's just oh fuck, we're out of sperm. Yeah, 65. But we have a we lot. got sperm. Yeah. We're worth a lot of money. Are we going to be oh, making wow. shit tons of money? Are like, you going to go like to the can can we, go spank can, bank and just can get we, can we start, 10 can, grand? Can we start banking that right now and freezing it? How, good, can. how long can, totally. can Why wouldn't we yeah. do that right now? What if What if we don't realize Everybody it? What if sh- this is like early Bitcoin? White, like, ah, white gold. Yeah, right. You throw it away and like, whatever. Not a big deal. This is brilliant, actually. Could be worth millions of dollars. This yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, we should it, save we, it. If we, we saved it now, it'd be good, it could be good frozen, right? We could set our future generations of children up with retirement. Wow. I know. Wow. Literally right. called the spank bank. After we're done with this, we're going to have a meeting. Maybe. <laughs> That's a good idea. Maybe. And, hey, you're going to do it anyway. Might yeah. as well save it. Mm. Got some good DNA. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before we get into the questions, we are going to be talking about squatting quite a bit in this upcoming segment of the podcast. I want you to know we have a free guide on how to get a better squat. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. It's great information. Go check it out. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is for from PB for the soul. What are the best exercises to build mass in the quads? Yes, quads. We love building them quads. Uh, oh, quads. The, one you're, the one you're not doing. Yeah, well, that's always a good answer, right? Yeah. It, whatever you're used to, oftentimes changing it up will get your body to respond like it's a, like you did the first time you start working well, out. Well, this reminds me of the, just the recent debate that we had on the show about the whole hip thrust and squat thing mm-hmm. and you know this back and forth of which one's technically better and 
you know, I would make the argument that if somebody squats all the time, uh, introducing hip thrust would be the best thing for the, the butt. If someone mm-hmm. always hip thrusts and never squats, I would say go do squats, yeah. and I bet you that will give you the greatest results. Yeah. Now, generally speaking, though, right? Generally speaking, if you're comparing all the lower body exercises, I really don't think there's anything that can compare to a back squat or a front squat mm-hmm. in terms of quad development. Now, I'll tell you just for myself personally and for my clients, but I'll speak for myself first. You know, I my my legs, my upper legs respond quite uh, quite well to exercise. The so one body part I have that I feel like uh, is you know a little bit genetically gifted. The rest of my body got to work really hard to get to respond. My legs just seem to grow. And I've gone through stints of not barbell squatting, but still doing lots of other exercises, still doing lunges, still doing, um, you know, leg presses and sissy squats and, you know, uh, hack squats and everything and keeping the volume high. And then I'll go back to doing squats and nothing, my quads just explode. They're just mm-hmm. nothing. My quads don't respond to anything uh, like barbell squats. Mm-hmm. Now, for my clients, uh, it was very same thing. Uh, barbell squats in comparison to anything else, they nobody saw results like they did with the squats. They just didn't. Absolutely not. I could make the case for um, Bulgarian split squats. I, I not, But here's the thing, though, is I had already been squatting for a long time when I introduced Bulgarian split squats. Mm-hmm. So uh, you could argue my argument that I was just making. See, I like hearing your your um what you, your experience because you had said for a long time your legs were a hard body part to yes. develop. And, yes. And so I like to hear what worked for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, for sure. Uh, well, a couple of things actually. Uh, getting to a deep full range of motion, a squat was a big difference too. So just squatting was great. I mean, that was obviously built some of the the foundation of my legs, getting starting to do that. Because before that, I was the leg extension, leg press kid, mm-hmm. avoided squats like the plague. Um, then I started squatting consistently, noticed my legs really start to develop. Then I got into like Bulgarian split squats, really saw my legs blow up. Then I got into a place where I was working on my mobility and my deep squats, and I've never had to do less work to keep my legs the size they are mm-hmm. when I deep full range of motion squats develop my legs more than anything that I've done by themselves. And again, this is, you know, my experience. I still think though, that if we're, who I'm talking to really matters. If I'm talking to somebody who's like a, a, a fresh clean slate, you don't really train at all. Um, I, I would, I'm with you, Sal, I would make the case that, you know, squatting is probably the the quickest, best way that we can develop your core, your, just your le- in total legs. I mean, I think too. Everything, hamstring, glute, yeah, quads. Ha- I mean, I even feel, I told you guys that mm-hmm. when I started squatting really deep, I saw my calves come up. Of course. Mm-hmm. I, that blew my mind away. Especially at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Because I was I was starting to get into really deep, heavy squats, and I started to notice that my, I was getting some calf development from it and hamstring development from it. So I don't think anything is a bigger bang for your buck than just getting in. Oh, it affects the entire leg. Yeah, I can totally echo that. I think, uh, you know, in terms of like what specifically blew my quads up even more was when we would uh, actually elevate our heels and we did front squats, but yeah. it, we still kept it like it was all about keeping that heavy load. So if you started to work on it as a skill, a front squats, you know, challenging for a lot of people because they just don't do it, you know. And so that was something that you have to kind of work your way into then being able to add a substantial amount of load like you could in a back loaded squat for it to have those types of gains and results. Uh, but the majority of clients in general, like it was not hard to build their quads. In fact, they were more likely to be quad dominant than they were, uh, you know, to, to, to have more development in their glutes or right. hamstrings. Right. Now, there, there's camps, and we have friends that are in, in these camps, that hack squat is the best way to develop your quads. You mean for mach- uh, in terms of machines? Okay. Just in general, yeah. that, that, that that would get behind. They're really trying to isolate it that way. Yeah, because... Of, because well, a hack squat mimics a squat, a normal squat more than the leg press, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. If you a were, leg press is a very short range of motion. Even if you do a deep leg press, it's a short range of motion in comparison. Yeah, and because of the lack of ankle mobility in most people, most people can't actually squat deep, full range of motion. And so they can in a hack squat. And mm-hmm. so... So that's where I can get behind. Like I, I know our, our good buddy, uh, Coach Eugene Tao. Like he's he definitely touts this a lot. Um, that the hack squat is better for leg development for most people. And where I can get behind that argument is that case is that most people can't do an ass to grass 
a barbell back squat. And so if that same person who can't can't break 90 degrees on their, their barbell back squat could go to a hack squat and get all the way down mm -hmm. because of the way your feet are positioned relative to where your, your back and hips are, um, and it doesn't take very, you don't have to have any ankle mobility really to do a hack squat. No, your feet the, are in front of you. Yeah, yeah. All the way down to the floor for that reason. It's, it's a, basically a squat with full range of motion. Yeah. So I would argue it's, it's superior right there. now. Now for me, there was actually a period of time where I was having a lot of fun developing my legs and I wanted to compare training styles. And I, I went through a period where I did my, this was my workout. It consisted of leg press, hack squat, leg extension, leg curls. And then I compared that to a period of time where I would just go and do 10 or, or 12 sets of just squats. The squats won. I, I did the same thing. They yeah. built my legs I more. Did the, I did the same thing. I did the same thing with deadlifts. I've talked about this about deadlifting mm -hmm. uh, for my back and not doing all the other you know, you know know top exercises that people say and nothing did compare to it. That's why I think, we're, I think we're so adamant about pushing people in that direction right. that yeah. squatting and deadlifting are just- The big five. They know, are. It's, consider it's, them always. Yeah, it's just- they're, it, all things equal, right? Mobility's fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, level of training, all that. But and this is why these sometimes these questions are are hard to answer because it is nuanced. If you have a client who limits ankle mo or they have very poor ankle mobility, then you can make the case that some other exercise might be better. Or if you have a client who has actually got great form, but has been they've been squatting for years and they've never done a Bulgarian split squat or they never do a hack squat. squat. Yeah. yeah, or assist. I mean, if you've never done some of these movements, then right away as a coach and a trainer, yeah. I'm going to, and they're saying to me, Adam, I want to keep developing my quads and I squat three times a week and I've been doing that for the last four years. And I go, how long have you, when was the last time you hack squatted? Or when was the last time you did a Bulgarian split squat? And they go, oh, I never do that. I'm going to go, well, those exercises are going to build your quads more than anything else. Yeah, and I want to add one more thing, uh, all things being equal. And I love heavy lifting. Everybody knows that, right? If I'm, if I, I have a tendency to go fly, five reps or lower uh, when I'm working out, just have a lot of fun doing it. But I'll tell you, when I do sets of 12 or 15 reps in the squat and I'm consistent, blows my legs up. The muscles just just explode. I get a lot of hypertrophy from that relatively high rep range. Well, this is the Stan Efferding camp, which I love that he, he talks about the 20s. Yes. You know? And that, to me, that's just because the novelty of it. Probably. Because most people, even if you are a, a regular squatter, very few people like to squat 12, 15 reps. No. I, I don't know very many people that are you need. A, you need. I need personally a couple hours of nothing afterwards. Most people that are, the most people drawn to squatting and that are good squatters, they like to squat because they like to increase the weight mm -hmm. and yeah. get stronger and stronger and stronger. And that doesn't play very well into 15, 20 reps. But for, for gains, for, for hypertrophy, for building your mm -hmm. legs, building your quads, if you've never done 20s, if you've never gone and front squatted twenty or done a back barbell back squat for twenty, oh, have fun with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to reduce the weight significantly, but your legs will blow up totally. from that. Next question is from Paula Angela. What's the quickest way to recover from soreness? Oh God, you know what? I, I've tried everything um, <laughs> in the past as a kid, especially to because I thought that soreness. Yeah. There's was, so many products for this too. Uh, I'll tell you what. There is nothing that compares to movement. There is nothing that compares to movement yeah. to get the soreness to go away faster Blood and flow. and in, to speed up recovery. So you could try, you know, cold therapy and an ice bath. You could try massage. You could try sauna. You could try all that stuff. Or you could stretch and do very light uh, resistance exercise. You know, trigger sessions and MAPS anabolic. That's part of where they come from. Was I noticed that when I was sore, no matter where I was sore, let's say it was my chest. And I go do some very light intensity push ups throughout the day. Not only did the soreness go away, but my recovery would be a lot yeah. faster. I'd be stronger the next time I work out. Yeah, I noticed the same things. But and I, I love rubber bands for that to do like these like real light pumping type exercises. You literally view it as like I'm pumping blood throughout where I feel like sore and like immobile. Like it, you start to regain, uh, you know, a bit of mobility and range of motion like almost immediately. And so you just kind of carry that and lightly go through these movements. Yeah. When your muscles contract, they literally squeeze blood blood out. And then when they relax, they allow blood in. And so the process of contracting and relaxing, which is what these reps are, is literally flooding your body, your, your muscles with nutrients, with recovery agents, with all the things that your body wants to send there anyway to recover. Now I used to, when I was younger, I thought the fastest way to recover was to not move. 
I thought, okay, if I work out and I'm really sore, what I need to do is kick my legs up on the couch, let my body heal. Like, don't move. Don't cause any more yeah, damage. Right. Let it heal. The truth is that's the worst possible thing you could do. In fact, you can, if, you want, if you want to be an experiment, if you want to do an experiment on yourself, go do overreach in a workout. Go hammer mm -hmm. your legs super hard beyond what you normally would. And then for the rest of the week, lay in bed and then go back to your workout and you'll be weaker. You'll actually lose muscle and strength from doing that. Um, so movement, movement crushes everything. Well, I, I, it depends on how much, uh, you know, money we have or how, the access you have to what, what tools, right? So, I, I mean, I per because I have access to a lot of cool stuff, I mean, I have like a formula for this for myself. I'm really trying to m maximize my training and recovery. Uh, I mean, I would, not, I would obviously train after training hard. Uh, I'm in the infrared sauna. I'm I'm uh, hydrated, so I'm drinking a lot of water. I'm well fed. While I'm in the infrared sauna, or right afterwards, I'm doing a good like stretching session, so like mobility or like really good deep stretch. Or you know, if I'm lazy, I've got Katrina doing like a deep tissue massage on me. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, I'm doing bouts of uh, mo mobility or trigger type sessions to facilitate recovery. Um, that formula for me, well, well fed, hydrated, infrared sauna, stretching and mobility, moving work, getting blood flow and fluid moving around, uh, I think will speed up recovery more than any supplement out on the market, right? Yeah, There's sure. all kinds of cool things out there for, you know, people touting BCAAs and uh, turmeric and all those things. Great. They have benefits. Sure. You could take that too, in addition to it, but those things that I just said, Stretching after a hard hard workout, infrared sauna, hydration, being well fed, and then not laying around the next day and moving those muscles mm -hmm. and getting them and yeah. getting them work, not training them hard again, getting them moving and getting blood pumping in like a trigger session. Yeah. That to me, that's the best formula. Well, I do find value if it's there. It's like a swollen type of an issue too, like of getting elevation, like doing some Eldoas where I'm up against the wall, my legs are up, and I'm actually like you're still active though in those in those poses and stretches and squeezing the muscles, but um, you're allowing gravitational forces to kind of you know bring that fluid back in and, and you know express it out. Next question is from M Becker eleven. How do I know when to stop a reverse diet? I am four months in and have gained muscle and improved my metabolism. How long do I keep going? Well, um, you, you stop the reverse diet when you're feeling very healthy. Your libido is feeling good. You're getting good sleep. So hormones feel like they're back in balance. And you've reached a calorie amount that you now feel like you can reverse out of or you can cut from, right? So typically for clients, it was when they would tell me all those things, I feel good, everything feels great. And then they come to me and say, I, I, I'm eating a lot. I feel like I, I, I'm eating, I feel like I can't eat anymore. And then I'll say, okay, now we're at a good place where we could start to cut from because then we'll end up, will be a good place to start. I, I like that answer because this is very individualized, right? Totally. Like, like it's not a, a time thing. It's not, oh, once you hit five months, you're at where you're supposed to reverse diet. Reverse dieting can take a very long time for some people. It could be relatively quick for other people if they have a very... Uh, responsive metabolism to things like this also matters where their calorie intake was before, where it's at now. The, the generic answer that I is the where you just went, Sal. I always like to, I, if we are gaining muscle, we like the way we're looking. We're not putting on a lot of body fat. I'm increasing calories, whether it be week over week or month over month. I'm going to keep doing that until my client comes to me and goes like, Adam, this is too much food. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I just, it's a lot to Good eat. Good place to be. Yeah. yeah, it's a great, that's a great place to be to now reverse and go the opposite direction and start cutting. What I don't want to do, if we, let's say this person's getting great results, but they're still only eating, let's say 1500 calories or something. And they're like, I'm still kind of hungry. Mm -hmm. Keep reversing. If you're still hungry, keep feeding the body, keep building muscle, keep going in that direction until you get to a place where you're like, this is a lot of food and it's almost hard to get. And that's, that's how, this is how I treated all my competitors. That's why I would never take on a, a client who, who would want to sign up with me and say, hey, Adam, I have a show in November and get me ready for a show because I wanted to do this with them before we cut for a show. I wanted to build their metabolism up to where they looked at me and said, I'm eating so much food, I can't eat anymore, Adam. I don't want to do this. Okay, now we're ready to prep for a show. Now let's start talking about restricting and cutting and getting ready. I think everybody should go through that phase for sure if you're thinking about competing. And if you're this per just a normal person, I mean, you're the one that knows this answer better than anybody. Yeah, you don't want to cut from low calories because then you're screwed. You know, if you're eating 1,500 yeah, you calories, to go with that. yeah, we're going we're gonna to end up at 1,000, 900 calories. Now you got to maintain at that. Yeah, so, not sustainable. No, you want to get it up, 
with good lean body mass, feeling good. That way, when you cut, where you end up is a is a great place, uh, an easier place to maintain. Next question is from Soraya Graham. I want to add running to my weightlifting routine. I was thinking of running a mile or 10 minutes prior to lifting. My goal is to keep and improve on gains, but also weave in some endurance training. Or is it better to run after weights or run on my days off? Help. Okay. After, after after weights day, or days yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, it, it depends. Okay, so we're splitting hairs a bit because you're not running a ton. You're running a mile. But here's, That's here's, a good point. here's the deal. What's more important to you, the endurance or the strength? If endurance is more important than you run before you work out, if strength is more important than you run after you work out, the best answer is on the days off, in my opinion. Um, on the days off, when you're not lifting, then you don't have these kind of competing signals. But if it's mm -hmm. on the same day, studies will show whatever you do first, you tend to improve the most um, in your workout. By the way, this is true for exercises too. So whatever your exercises you do at the beginning of your workout tend to be the ones you get the most improvement in. And the ones at the end of the workout, you tend to get the least improvement. But again, we are splitting hairs yeah. here. You're only running one mile, so it's not going to make a huge difference either way. I feel like we address this all the time, uh, and I and I feel like too because you know everybody is is so inactive and sedentary in general. I think like even like having a pursuit to jog, run, do whatever, like to to acquire more steps throughout your day is something everybody should consider. Even if you're sitting all the time, just to, to gain more activity in general. I mean, there's a lot of other ways to accomplish that in which I tend to prefer like the neat method where we're just like focusing on just being up and being active and, and, you know, being more productive and, and, and using that time, uh, you know, you know, to accomplish things within your house or work or whatever, uh, versus just like running on a treadmill, like a hamster. Uh, but, you know, if this is something that you really enjoy to do, uh, you know, I, I see no problem in it in, in incorporating that. But, yeah, I, I would definitely put it at the end of uh, your workouts if the priority right now is strength. I love this right after a workout, especially I mean, a mile, less than 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, even if you have a relatively slow mile, you're doing that in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, you're just cruising. Yeah, that's a that's cruising. And and if you do it every single day, you will build some endurance. You'll mm -hmm. get good at it relatively quick. So, And I like that. This is... This is actually the place that I kind of go back to. Like if I haven't ran in a while, this has been actually on my mind because I haven't in a while, is I like to just make sure I can run a mile. And the, the, my logic behind that is I'll probably never have to in my life run longer than a mile. You know what I'm saying? That's probably the most I'll ever have to. Yeah. So I want to be pretty good at it. I want to be able to, if I got to go take off with my son or do something where I got to run for a straight eight minutes or so, I'm pretty efficient at it. I don't have any desire to run five, 10, 15 beyond that. And so- I want and to it, catch a burglar. And because <laughs> it's such a, because it's, yeah, yeah hey, exactly. Back here. Right. If a guy steals from you, he's not getting very far. He's not getting longer than a mile. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I, to me, if you're only running that short of a duration, it, it's not that conflicting of a signal to build muscle yeah. at the same time. You're talking about a very short window. It's not. I mean, until, it's almost a warm up. Honestly, if it you're, is. If your if your endurance is decent, you know, if I ran a mile before, it wouldn't be a warm up. It'd be a hard workout. But if if someone else did, you know, if your endurance is okay, it's kind of a warm up. So I'm glad you brought that up because this is what I would do during when I was competing. Um, I would actually run a mile before I started working out, and it was like a warm up. Mm -hmm. It was like I'm just going to do that, and because my priority now is to cut and to lean out, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go into the workout. You're not lifting heavy anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not lifting. I'm not training really heavy. All my gains were done in the off season. Now it's time to shred, peel down. So I just want to burn, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna burn as many calories before going into the workout. And then I'm really gonna burn when I'm getting into my workout. And then sometimes I'd even walk for ten or fifteen minutes afterwards. So yeah, that's short of a duration. I think you could do every single day and be totally fine and make great gains. Excellent. Look, if you like Mind Pump, if you like our podcast, you got to go check out MindPumpFree.com. We have a lot of guides and written information that we created for listeners and viewers uh, just like you. You can also find all of us on social media. It's uh, Instagram is where we're found. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I do have this dream that at some point, modern medicine, when they recommend you go exercise, they say, we want you to go do resistance strength, which by the way, can be performed with your body can be performed with bands. Of course, you can use weights or machines. By the way, in the book, I put workouts in there as well. I actually put programs in there.